Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you had a great lunch. Uh, it's a bit cold outside for you guys, maybe. Uh, just so you know, I'm from Germany. This is summer for me. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully it'll be even warmer tomorrow. Um, yeah, to welcome you back, we are going to start a panel in a minute here about uh, alternative monetization, uh, alternatives to domain parking. And uh, after this panel, we have a coffee break, but another very exciting workshop at 3.30 to be precise. It's about how to negotiate a fair price for a domain. So with a great focus on domain names today, I think uh, you'll have um, a pretty decent afternoon with a good wrap up of, of different topics. Um, yeah, and that will be until 4.30. Uh, up until then, uh, or at 7, we'll have, the, of course, the, the evening activity. So we'll start with the panel right now, over here. And let me introduce to you uh, the distinguished panel we have this afternoon. To my left here, Braden Pollock. Uh, Braden is a domainer and a serial entrepreneur who owns several online and offline companies, including legal brand marketing, which focuses on lead gen for attorneys, and is a leading provider of DUI leads in the US. He owns several franchises of Smart Start, an ignition interlock provider, sciencefiction.com, and signaturefighting.com, as well as sits on the board of Epic. Braden is a regular speaker on the international domain conference circuit, and also a consultant for corporate clients and marketing trainer for criminal lawyers. Uh, then next we have Mike, also known as Zeppi Zeppelin. Um, Zeppi is the visionary behind many internet brands like music.com, beer.com, computer.com, creditcards.com, debt.com, diamond.com, I could probably go on forever. Um, and you know, he has been featured multiple times on NBC's Today Show, uh, numerous TV networks and magazines. Zeppi is a creator of the Harvard Business School elective e-business, and he was a featured speaker at the Economist magazine's Global Branding Conference in Shanghai. His career began actually at Drexel Burnham Lambert, and he later became one of the youngest vice presidents at Bear Stearns. Along with Deepak, Deepak Chopra, um, he co-authored Ask the Kabbalah, and they are now producing a documentary film, The Reality of Truth. Then we have Jay Chapman. Um, Jay is a, also a serial entrepreneur, cultivating the value, use, and future of the company's portfolio of DigiMedia. Um, as a creator, incubator, developer, investor, and or advisor for a spectrum of startups and emerging companies around the globe, including Bump, Web Design Shops, Bubbleheads and Swap.com, just again to name a few. Um, and he also serves others through efforts on non-profit boards and service projects. Um, yeah, and besides, it's, uh, I read that you reside in Oklahoma City uh, with three children and, and just recently enjoyed Les Miserables. Great movie. I, I haven't seen it yet. I know the, the musical. Um, yes. Next we have uh, Laveen, Laveen Punjabi. He's president and COO of Affinity, um, a leading online advertising network. Um, he has rich, a very rich and varied experience of almost a decade in the online advertising community. Throughout his successful career, Laveen has spearheaded the development of innovative products and services related to search, contextual, display and performance advertising. He has also been instrumental in fostering the adoption of alternative and more effective ways of domain monetization amongst Affinity's clientele of global brands. And last but not least, we have Michael Gilmore, um, executive director and co-founder of ParkLogic, born in Melbourne, Australia. Um, Michael has been working in the BBS and internet industry for the past 20 years. Mm. Um, after completing his MBA and founding a number of e-commerce businesses, Michael served as a director of the prestigious Australian Internet Industry Association, the last two of which he was elected to the position of vice chairman. As a member of the board, he contributed to forming internet industry policies for cybercrime, copyright, copyright, as well as chairing the committee for establishing online advertising standards. Michael has been a domain investor for over 10 years now, and together with his business partner, David Gibbs, who I believe is also here, 
Michael founded PipeLogic, which both maximizes the domain revenue and manages domain portfolios as true value assets. Um, so I welcome all of you, and please, for the audience, the same. Um, I think, given what I just uh, reading out all your, all your bias, uh, we have uh, so much expertise, experience, and you know, successful businesses sitting here. All of you could have uh, each individual one of you could be the, the one of the keynote speakers if you like. Uh, only you don't maybe have the, the looks of uh, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? We can try. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but in any case, it's, it's you know I think it's it's in a panel that um, you know is, is maybe interests more than than some just being a, a keynote because it's it focused really on on topic that we have a lot of expertise already sitting in the room and um, talking about alternative monetization and um, you know alternatives to domain parking if you like uh, this could be anything and and everything and uh, I think before we go into depth of, of you know ideas and, and suggestions to the audience I'd, I think it would be great if, if each one of you could give you know in, in a few sentences just an idea of what your take is on alternative monetization as how you see it and where the, the challenges are. Maybe just start with you, Graydon, to give a, just a brief description of where you see it. Well, obviously, domain parking revenues are, are going into the toilet, so we need to look for uh, alternative monetization, uh, alternative revenue sources. My focus is lead generation. Which, which, is, which has always been good for me. I've been talking about it for years. Um, the problem is that domainers in general are, are pretty lazy. Um, so if I'm insulting any of you, I, I guess I'm insulting you. Um, we've, we've all been lazy because we can sit back and just wait for the parking revenues to come in. But since those have taken such a dive, we now have to work with our domains and we need to monetize them. Um, the closer you get to the money, the more you're going to make. You can, you can sit back and lease them, for example. Uh, Epic has a, has a leasing platform. Um, there's a couple other companies that are doing that, in which case you don't have to work quite so hard. You do have to manage the leasing portion. But otherwise, if you develop them, you can do lead generation, you can do affiliate deals. There's all kinds of ways to make money once you build a website. But prior to building a website, you're very limited. OK. So lead gen, building websites, maybe leasing, that's OK. Thanks. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, really, I would just being proactive, I think, is the most important thing because taking that step to development, what happens is once you start to develop, when you're just talking about a domain name, you're, it's kind of easy for somebody to quantify maybe what that's worth or what the range is. But once you start to develop in any way and you start to have pages that are indexing and search and traffic and users and uh, you know, commerce and things like that, now you have a business value to any domain that you have. And now when somebody comes and tries to buy that domain or, you know, whatever the case is, they are going to have to pay you a premium. So the reality is you should be developing on any domain that is of quality because you go from domain value to business value really fast. And then on the flip side, when you do go to sell it, there's this opportunity cost where if you were to keep developing that, you know, you're going to take it someplace into the future and that has value. So when somebody wants to buy it, uh, you know, the, the situation is such that they have to pay you for that opportunity cost as well. So I think anybody who's just, you know, if they have good domains to just be parking them or doing nothing with them is, mm -hmm. you know, tragic because you're just keeping that domain value. But if you could you know, do some development and be proactive, then you're in a situation where, you know, you've elevated the value of every single domain that you have. So, in other words, um, enhancing the value through development and, and making it bigger and more valuable? Yeah. Okay. Right. Jay? Jorg, I think it's about time that we stop thinking about it as alternative, you know, alternative monetization ways. Um, our company, Digimedia, has been monetizing domains for years through PPC. We continue to do that. Um, but I think you've got to take the blinders off and realize that there are other opportunities. And if you really want to optimize the value of the domains in your portfolio, that you should be, uh, to some extent, perhaps even revenue, you know, revenue stream agnostic. 
um, and start considering some of the other, um, the other things like people on this, this panel will discuss. Um, these two gentlemen are you know, experts in developing and creating businesses. Um, you've got parking experts for being able to um, create more parking revenue. You've got uh, zero click um, instances um, where you can just do redirects and things like that. Um, for our sakes uh, here at Digimedia, we do uh, development. We do, we're kind of an accelerate, accelerator, an incubator, um, as well as a creator. And so we just try and make sure that what, you know, and I would encourage everyone to just look, uh, parking is, is fine. There's nothing, nothing necessarily wrong with it, um, but to, uh, to consider other alternatives um, and, uh, and not consider them alternatives, but to consider them opportunities for an optimal uh, revenue stream for your business. So basically a healthy mix of the whole portfolio of options. Uh, to, to have a healthy, uh, a healthy va evaluate each one, I think okay. is the best way to say that. Lavin? Well, I would actually say that parking is an alternative. Well, your primary sources of uh, revenue has got to be content and building websites. I mean, once you have a content website, there's so many alternatives. You know, I'm, you know back to what Braden was saying earlier, this, you know, you can have, uh, I think it was Zapier, Braden, you got email monetization, you got data, you got banners, you got videos, there's so many alternatives. And I mean, we're an ad network. Now, as an ad network, every day we work with publishers of all different kinds. And all of these, pub and when we work with them, we realize that too, that content is king. I mean, if you have content, you're gonna build a great site. You're not gonna just be dependent on PPC revenue. I mean, how many of you guys over here know that there's 10 other opportunities outside of PPC? I mean, there's video monetization. Did you know that you could actually sell data of the people coming to your website? Just people coming to your website and expressing intent in that domain name? There's, there's a value for that. I mean, there's companies that pay you CPM rates for that too. You haven't showed them any ad, but they won't know that who went to that website. So there's data, there's mobile, there's, uh, you know, there's email. There's so many alternatives out there. So honestly, I think that the best way to really build out uh, I mean, the, the best alternative is build out sites, build out true content, stay true to the name, and it's, it's got a long way to go after that. Domain parking is just a very small, like, it's a placeholder. Okay. Yeah, Mike? Jorg, it's a, I, I think that, um, like, I've been around a long time over the years, and I've seen a huge amount of talk about development and all that sort of stuff. I'm actually not a believer in it. I'm, belie I'm a believer in building a business. That's two different things. If I want to do development, I'll go and get WordPress, Joomla, whatever you like, and I can put something together, give me half a day, and it's there. And you know what? There's been a lot of effort in those sort of directions, people trying to build their own content management systems and that sort of stuff. And literally millions of dollars poured into that, that direction. But when I look at domains, what I want to do, and I would recommend to every domainer, is they build out, not just build a domain, they build a business behind it, which means what's your business plan, what are you selling, what are you actually doing um, to, to earn some revenue from that. And uh, that's sort of, for, for many people, that's a bit of a messy proposition. Because now I'm not just collecting PPC revenue, I'm having to actually do work here. And uh, it's hard, it is hard work. It's like any business it is hard work. But I guess that at ParkLogic, one of the things we, we have done is what we've tried to do is integrate all the different monetization opportunities, whether it's PPC, direct uh, advertisers, affiliate. We're really agnostic in some ways. Is how do we extract the maximum value from that traffic? And that's really what we sort of focus on. OK. Uh, you, you said building a business and, and having a business plan. I think that's a, a good um, start for you, maybe, Brian, because you, you, you mentioned you, you run legal brand marketing and do lead gen. Now, if you compare lead gen for any given site that you've built out, I mean, A, how does it compare to parking? And for the audience, what kind of advice can you give, um, you know, for similar sites or, you know, what, what, what kind of advice can you give them in forms of how to implement a successful lead gen side, what's necessary? Well, I, I don't think you can compare it to parking. Uh, um, um, with parking, you're getting 
a rev share of a rev share of a rev share, right? You're getting a fraction of that ad dollar. And with lead gen, you're going to either directly to the advertiser or you're going through an, perhaps an aggregator, but you're much closer to that full ad dollar than going through channels parking. Um, and, and parking, you're getting, you're getting a percentage of a click as opposed to a lead. And a lead is worth far more than a click is. What would be a perfect example of a site that you, that you have created for that lead gen? And, and wh how, what have you done to build it out? What, what are the steps, I mean, uh, having content, having fitting affiliate programs, etc.? Well, to get indexed well, you have to have a lot of content. And you have to constantly update that, on, that content. So we, we're updating content every day, throughout the day. And without that, you're not going to be an authoritative site. Okay. Right? So, so that's for indexing to get organic traffic. And then once you generate that lead, the lead is worth far more money than anything else, um, depending on the vertical. It could be, you know, it could be pennies, but it could be up to you know, a few hundred dollars, depending on the lead. Um, and for anyone that's looking to get into it, you want to look for uh, a vertical that is established, because if it's a mature vertical, there are then buyers, right? So if if you, um, I got a call once for. Um, in Australia for bull hire, mechanical bull hire, right? renting mechanical bulls. They, they wanted to sell the leads. There are no buyers for that. Because how many providers are there? And it's just not a mature market. So that would be a silly thing to go into. However, if you want to get into insurance or education or legal or financial services or home improvement, these are all very mature verticals. And there's a lot of buyers. There's institutional buyers. Plus, there's plenty of end user buyers that you can reach out to. End user buyers, of course, you're going to get much more money, but that's more work because an end user buyer is only going to buy uh, a small geographic area as opposed to an institu institutional buyer. An aggregator can buy nationally and more sub verticals. So it's easier to go to an aggregator, but there's less money in it. So it's up to you and how much work you want to put into it. Maybe um, just to, you know, we were talking about insurance. I just want to say the reason that I think. The domain is sort of critical here. And the thing that I want to emphasize is that I think you should go to the top of the food channel still because we're so early. So again, I'm going to keep saying .com here you know, is going to have the most credibility. And I think right now, the reason to build out your domains is if you have a domain that's good, you're, you have a credibility that somebody else doesn't have. So when we built insurancequotes.com, it was a domain that was parked. It was making a few thousand dollars a month parked. And I approached the owner and said, let me develop this, and we'll do search engine optimization, and we'll get the organic leads. So what we found out was that 40% of the people who were coming to the homepage of insurancequotes.com were filling out the application, 40%. And the reason that is is because when somebody does a search these days, credibility is so important because they, they type in insurance quotes, and up comes this search page, and it says, Geico, State Farm, AIG, uh, you know, on and on, Progressive, whatever it is. And they look at that and they say, oh, I know what Geico wants, I know what State Farm wants, but oh, here's uh, insurancequotes.com. Hmm, that might be a good place to do my due diligence. So they click on it. Right there, you had to have the credibility to track them. Now they click on it. Now you give them a site that resonates with what they thought they were going to see, and it matches that. Now, they look around and now they say, oh, okay, well, they don't have to go back out to Google and search around for some more insurance quotes. They go, I was on insurancequotes.com and they click on and they get quotes. And so the key is when you talk about credibility, number one, they know that insurance quotes had more to do with their time than steal their identity. So they, that immediately, they feel comfortable to put their information in. But secondly, when they go home that night and let's say their wife or their husband says, hey, did you take care of the insurance? And they say, yeah, I went on insurancequotes.com and they're going to send us a bunch of quotes. That's all good. If they say, oh, I went on uh, insuranceworld.net and I put in an application, the person's going to say, well, like, who are they? Like, what, you know, how do you know? You know so you, you're trying to do somebody, you know, you're trying to eliminate all of these reasons that they have to go back and search and do more and more due diligence. And if you have the domain, you have the like inalienable right to some percentage of that credibility in that category. So if you have a domain, you know, develop it because you're going to get that credibility, which today 
is probably mo as important as whether you can draw them to your site, is whether you can get them to give you, you know, their social security number, their your birthday, their credit card. It's, it's critical, and the domain gives you that immediately. Now, f from my understanding, Zeppi, um, as early as diamond.com or beer.com, you always build out the domains, and that added to resale value, right? Yeah. Now, uh, f you know, back from the days of diamond.com to today, how, you know, how important, though, is it for you to, besides building a brand that has a great resale value, the, you know, the revenue flow and, and the monetization aspect of it ongoing, how important is it to you? And, and also, I mean, yeah, what is your best uh, advice in terms of, of uh, uh, lead gen or CPA? Yeah, so, I, I mean, the more that you can do, the better. Obviously, insurancequotes.com was all about, to bank rate who eventually bought it, was all about not only how much traffic, but how many closed, you know, uh, applications were we doing, the quality of the application. So that one, the monetization all the way through was important. But let's say with um, diamond.com, you know, I basically put up a, you know, a site that was sort of like a diamond portal, what it was going to be, how to buy a diamond, diamond auction sites, diamond retail sites. And then I put press out about what I was doing at diamond.com got calls from all the diamond companies, and basically just went and interviewed them all to see whose business model I liked. And I met somebody that had a deal with SoftBank, had $100 million, they were one of De Beers' largest site holders. And they said, look, no matter what you do, we have a bigger picture for this, so we want to buy it. So it didn't really matter how much I was really monetizing, but if I had parked that site, they would have said, oh, this is a domain, you know? Yeah. It's, it's nothing, it's gonna, it's like, this is what the cap on a domain is. So it was is. more of an investment upfront to build a brand, to get the visibility of the domain out, and, and less the, and that, at, at least for this domain, the monetization aspect in, in terms of ongoing revenue. Yeah, and I think, well, lastly, if, if you are gonna develop a domain as a business, uh, and you have the right domain, then that's going to accelerate your salespeople's job as well. So I've had examples where we've called up, you know, uh, Sandy Weil, the head of Travelers, and said, or Citibank, and said, hey, we want to have uh, Citibank on creditcards.com. And 15 minutes later, the CEO of the company calls you back. So having that domain makes all of your business development monetization that much more, that's much stronger. And when people are buying your leads, they're going to pay a premium. So it's like, I just, I keep emphasizing you want to, I don't know why you would want to go to an <clears throat> inferior domain brand or extension okay. when we're so early. I think, that, I think what he's saying is, is if, if I may, that there's a huge leap from developing a domain into a destination site. Yes. So uh, diamond.com was just a domain until it was a destination site for all things diamond related. And then it was interesting, right, to, to the buyer, right? And the same with, with credit cards and all the other properties. Now, Jay, I know DG Media also has, has great assets and, and uh, success stories. Which one could you share with the audience? And, and also, you know, maybe in, in terms of advice, um, uh, how to build out a brand, how to create value, uh, you know, beyond monetization sure. and then make revenue as well. Well, I'll start out with the second question first. Please. Um, I think the decision of whether or not you just want to monetize a domain or build a brand is really about how much of yourself, how much of your heart, your money, your time, your effort that you're really willing to put into it. Because, um, and, it and I think it's a combination of all those things because there are um, plenty of companies who've gone out thinking they were trying to build a brand who just threw a bunch of money at it. But ultimately a brand will be built through how much value you provide to the people you're trying to serve in whatever business or vertical that might be. Um, and so my encouragement is, I, I would encourage everyone here to build brands. Um, that's what we try and do at Digimedia, but again, it is not, uh, it is not, the, uh, it is not the wide road. Um, there are a lot of lessons to be learned, and we've learned over, I guess, close to 15 years now. Um, we've learned plenty. Um, and we have had some successes. We've, uh, we've stumbled several times as well. Um, the one that I'd like to tell you about today is uh, webdesign.com, which uh, just celebrated its fifth anniversary. Uh, it actually started out as iThemes.com. It was a company that simply wanted to build uh, themes for WordPress uh, developers. And it quickly evolved into, uh, from themes, it went to plugins, 
they created the Backup Buddy plugin, which is currently used. I think we have about 162,000 active licenses of Backup Buddy right now that backs up your WordPress site in one click. Um, we then moved into training, which is where webdesign.com came into the picture. Uh, webdesign.com webdesign has just under about 500 hours of video training, training people on how to become web designers using WordPress, uh, theme designers, uh, plug-in developers, and also teaches them you know, if they'd like to start their own web design business and become either a consultant um, or just a, a web design company. Teaches them those sorts of things. So um, that company has been growing at about 30% uh, per year. It's got right now just around a little over 30,000 active customers for over 200 products and um, has several employees uh, there in Oklahoma City where we're based. This is why I like to talk about it because it's based in, in Oklahoma uh, where we are. And uh, they've got customers over, I think, customers over 125 countries. And uh, it's been an exciting business. It's profitable. Um, it's been fun. And I think that's ultimately, I think, what, you know, I like what Michael said. You really want to build a business. No matter what it is that you do, you want to build a business. And, you're, and that business you want to build ultimately needs to probably come from, you know, your Valentine, right? Not necessarily just from the, you know, whatever the profits. Those are great. But there, there needs to be some bigger things that kind of pull you along besides just the money because that'll, that'll, that may get old. Okay, thank you. Now, Lavine, um, as, as you know, we have uh, uh, a lot of domain traffic probably sitting in this room. If you just look at the traffic part um, of any di given domain name, and, and with your uh, you know, expertise in, in be it search, contextual display, uh, advertising, um, are global companies in advertising seeing more value in direct navigation traffic now, you know, direct navigation or expired traffic, and you know, that and also um, can you see because of that potentially a shift, a further shift to CPV, zero click or redirect traffic, monetization? Sure, I think, uh, well, we work with a lot of advertisers around the world, uh, primarily in the international geos, so outside of the United States, you know, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Brazil, India, lots of other countries, and lots of those advertising guys really don't know anything about zero click. They don't know anything about domain parking either. Very small percentages, like, I mean, we already face that big challenge here in the United States. I mean, even a lot of buyers on Google today, a few of them are educated about domain traffic, not everyone is. So if in the United States itself the penetration is so low, I would just imagine what it will be internationally. I mean, when you even bring up domain parking with most of these companies, they're like, what are you talking about? So what we usually do is, you know, we go in saying, we know this works, uh, we'll take the risk for you. So tell us what you want, what's your objective? They say, well, their objective is either driving a lead, driving a sale, you know, the user has to stay on the website for at least 30 seconds for them to qualify it as a valid user. It could be anything. And they're like, that's the objective. Go and get it done however you want. As long as my objectives are met, I don't care where the traffic's coming from. You do zero click, you do domain parking, you do email, you do mobile, I don't care. So honestly, a lot of the marketing companies out there that we work with are, they just, you know, these are, these are people doing jobs. They gotta make sure that their job's getting done and, when, and their bosses are happy with their outcomes. So for a lot of these guys, you know, the, the source of traffic doesn't matter. So I mean, that's how, that's how zero click kind of fits into our business model. We, we sell media of different types. We don't sell just domain parking traffic. We sell, we sell domain parking, we sell zero click, we sell in-text, we sell toolbar, anything that's contextual. Now, internet, like companies, so to answer your question, I don't think there's an appropriate answer to that because they don't even know it. It's, it's currently too small. So zero click for domain traffic is simply not known and still you're able to, to sell it to domainers because you are taking the risk uh, yeah. Doing a sort of arbitrage, well, for lack of better words. So to speak, we're the arbitrages in the middle. Yeah. But it's not PPC arbitrage, what everyone out does here. But uh, it's, you know, they pay us on a performance basis. And then we pay, well, we don't work with the domainers directly. We work with all the parking companies. So we integrate with most of the parking companies here. So we pay them their rates. Now, there is a big problem with the ecosystem, though, I must say. Well, I mean, you know, actually, 
it, it builds on every, what everyone's been, been, been talking about here is that, you know, build a business. So now as part of building a business, there are risks involved. But what happens with, uh, you know, with the zero click uh, space, firstly, a lot of the zero click traffic that we get from all the parking companies and everyone else, it's, um, it's a very small percentage of what the true domain parking industry is because it only comes into play after Google or Yahoo say, no, we don't want it, right? So that automatically cuts down the entire portion of traffic to a very small percentage. Well, that still is a big volume in, in total, but as a percentage of the large business, it's small. Then again, you've got domainers putting pressures on their parking companies saying, we need at least this much revenue. We need our guarantees, you know, it's CPMs or CPCs are going down. Well, um, that puts additional pressure. Then a lot of domainers out here are up to doing, you know, hanky-panky with their domain names, you know, arbitrage, all that stuff. Well, that's not good for the domain name. It's not good for the advertiser. It's not good for the ecosystem. Everyone wants to make a quick buck out of it, but Honestly, it's not long lasting. So these are challenges that the zero click industry, I mean, I, I'm just one of the players of the zero click industry. There's lots of others like me over here who are, you know, representing this traffic to direct advertisers and we face these challenges every day. So lack of volume, you know, hanky panky um, and not enough, uh, well, just not enough risk taking appetite from the domainer side. Okay, got it. Now, Michael, as a, domain management uh, company and service provider, you, you, I, I know that you work, as you mentioned, with, with all kinds of providers, be it parking, be it CPA, be it affiliate, but I'd be interested, um, uh, you being a long-standing partner as well, you know, with, with many domainers and parking companies, why is it that domain parking has been declared so many times dead, uh, but still is around? I mean, is it that we are all missing something, or what, what is your take on that? Yeah, I think it's a good, good question. Um, basically, I think what it boils down to is supply and demand. Domains have traffic. There's supply. Advertisers need traffic, quality traffic. There's demand. And really, what parking is is a meeting of those two. Um, and that it's a meeting in such a way as it's a scalable solution. Uh, I love hearing about insurance quotes and sciencefiction.com and and it was webdesign.com and everything. They're fantastic examples of a business in action. The problem is if you have a thousand domains, I challenge anyone to manage a thousand businesses. Uh, it, it's impossible. And this is where parking comes in. Is it scalable? Is that I can go along, set name servers, collect check, essentially. And you know what? You're right. You're not, you, the all sorts of other intermediaries taking a clip of the ticket on the way through. But, you know, there's, there's a few aspects of that. Like even if you do a surf and lead gen um, situation, is that there's a lot of hidden costs in doing that sort of thing, such as are you actually going to get paid from the person who said they would pay you, number one. Number two, we make sure you invoice them and you actually do get the money from them. So now you've got to have receivables. Then you've got, and, and then you've got to find the right person. Then which domain are we going to do this to? So there's a lot of hidden costs. And I think this is a mistake that many, uh, in my experience, many domainers have, have, have made is that um, they've ignored the hidden costs and the biggest hidden cost is your time. I remember I wrote an article on this uh, on my blog and it was about that domainers time is quite often valued at zero and it isn't, it isn't. So one of the things that, um, that we're at Park Logic, we're very focused on is sustainability. And there's two aspects of sustainability. One is revenues going up. And as you said, Jorg, we um, tap into whether it's parking solutions, affiliate, direct, advertisers. We, we use the whole gamut. And we developed a set of metrics that allows us to determine where the traffic should flow and how do we extract the most value of that. So the revenue, we want sustainable revenues. But also the other side of the equation is this, is what we've really focused on is driving in the cost for the domain owner. So we have domain owners, um, private equity firms and so forth said, here, here we go, Michael, here's our whole portfolio of domains, here's the keys to the registrars, um, set up a series of business rules of what we want to have renewed and so forth like that, 
and we do the whole lot from managing right through from any legal issues through to um, what should be renewed, when it should be renewed, see up um, reports for their boards to report on, all that sort of thing. And suddenly they look at themselves and go, okay, so I do not need these resources anymore. They drove down their cost. Why? Because ParkLogic's they're handling that. Again, the revenues are going up, costs are going down, profit looking better. Or they say, instead of allocating these people over here from managing DNSs and all that sort of stuff, which by the way, I think many people handle very badly, we typically see about a 10 to 15% revenue leakage just from those sort of things. Um, instead of doing that, they can allocate them to a site to develop and, and actually develop into a real business. So in terms of is parking dead, no because parking is the meeting of the demand with the supply and bring them together in a scalable sense. Um, the, other, the other thing that we spend a lot of time on, particularly the last 12 months, um, around domains, you said domain management is what we do, is around risk and managing risk associated with domains. It, and uh, we develop risk profiles for every monetization solution all that sort of stuff, uh, profiles in the traffic, um, and working out the risk profile of that. And it's not just looking at it like a TQ score or something. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time doing that, and I reflect upon the last few years, and there's been a number of risks that have gone. Like about four years ago, there was a legislative risk to the industry, whereby, like in Australia, it was like um, parking was gonna be banned by the, by the governing authorities. So that was then pushed aside. The parking was legitimized as a business. Great. A couple of years ago, it was all the browsers are going to change, and so no one's going to type anything in. <laughs> yeah, they haven't. <laughs> and uh, today, we look at, um, we're seeing different types of risks. We're seeing traffic quality risks, and you're talking about that. And uh, yeah, that's very, very important to stay focused on. We put a lot of effort into that. We see legal risks. Um, that there's more aggressive stance on that side as well. So we spend a lot of time with our, with our customers really working on that sustainability, just getting it sustainable, 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 um, and sustainable from a profit perspective, and using largely parking. Okay, so sustainability is, is one aspect, and you also mentioned scalability. Yes, yeah, scalability. So if, if I, I mean, you all gave great, great examples of how build outs and, and development and, and, and lead gen can, can help increase revenues. I mean, what would, for example, uh, uh, Brian, what would be um, your uh, um, advice to somebody who owns 1,000 names, like, like you mentioned, Michael, uh, how to get started and not you know, lose out on this opportunity of lead gen or affiliate uh, monetization? What would be your advice to get started with lead gen, if you're having 1,000 domain names. What domains to select, for example, and, and, and how to get started? Well, I would take a look at the traffic, first of all. So uh, what domain or what vertical is getting the most traffic? So uh, using the insurance analogy, if you've got, um, let's say, a strong insurance name, and then you've got maybe 50 more, right? So you've got traffic from all those. So if you chunk down your domains and, and create tranches, and you've got a tranche that has the most amount of traffic, that's where you would start. So not necessarily with one name, because one name could get 1,000 visitors a month, but you might have a tranche that gets 10,000 visitors a month, in which case you can build that out and start redirecting other names or building some smaller microsites and that, that sort of thing. Um, but not just, not just quantity of traffic, but also the value of that traffic is, is, a, is another element you have to look at. Mm -hmm. So you've got different verticals have different value. So okay. whether it's insurance or if, you're, if you've got a bunch of vampire teeth domains, there's no value in that, right? So s select the, the, the highest paying uh, vertical that you have or create more domains around that area? Or right, right, right. Combined with the amount of traffic now, you have in that tranche. Also looking at it, maybe Zeppi or uh, Jay, um, now, same for you, you have great names. Do you only rely, though, on uh, type and traffic, or do you do as investors well heavily in, in SEM buying traffic for that purpose? Yeah. Um, 
You know, I think it's important to analyze what your domains are because some of those domains are probably wasting a lot of your time. And I yep. think like the key is to look at the domains that are going to be future categories, future mega trends that you really should be pouring your time into because time is, you know, the element that's key. So I'll give you an example. You know, uh, I well, two two elements to it. Number one, I put your time in, but two. You don't have to go it alone. You know, I think the key is if you want to manage some of your risk, then you want to work with people who've already been there and done that. So an example where I'm doing that is in this whole green rush, where we've got this green rush where you know, legalization of marijuana is coming on board. You've got all these states. It's, a, it's going from a $1.7 billion legal industry in the next two years to a $9 billion industry. So do you have domains there? Do you have development there? So I started thinking that way and I thought, okay, well, this is a huge space where all these, uh, this information is going to be needed. You have all these people who want leads in this category who were never able to get them before. So I'm building out growyourown.com with a team and I've decided to partner with the owner of wellness.com mm -hmm. where he's already in this wellness category. He knows how to build strong traffic. He knows how to advertise around that vertical. So by doing a partnership deal with him and developing in this exploding industry, I'm, you know, embracing, I've, I've got a tailwind behind me and I've got a partner who's taking a lot of the risk out of it. And I think it's just, sometimes people get stuck to, oh, I have these thousand domains and, you know, quite honestly, I, I might, if I looked at that list, I might let, you know, 950 of them expire because it's, you only have a certain amount of time and I think you want to develop and I think, you know, just looking forward at what's going to work and trying to do that as cost effectively and efficiently as possible. That's, that's the goal. Okay. I think they should take Zappy's comments and, and just kind of tighten them up from my perspective is, is, you know, for what we do, we're, we're looking, we continue to look for partnerships because we, we have tried um, and continue to try actual in-house business creation um, maintenance and growth in-house and the truth of the matter is is that I even if our portfolio was only 20 domains we couldn't necessarily do all of that in-house so we've we, we've begun over the last several years um, we've begun to um, be more amenable to partnerships to be more amenable to uh, as one um, venture capital company um, guy told me over the phone not too long ago, he said, you guys are better than a venture capital company because you've got all the opportunities being brought to you from all these people who are contacting you who are interested in your domains. Um, I would encourage anybody who's got a lot of domains who feels like they've got more than what they can do to, uh, to consider what, what you can do with other people, like Zappy's talking about, um, and taking their expertise and their experience um, and what they've learned and partner you know, with your, uh, your domain that, uh, that means means what it says most of the time if it's a generic term um, and, uh, and take it and make one plus one equal three, four, or five. Okay. Um, I think I'd like to open this up in a minute for Q, uh, you know, Q&A. However, b before that, if we just fast forward and um, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about past trends and you know, where we stand currently. I, I'd, I think it would be, be useful and interesting to see for each, from each one of you where you see the industry in five years from now and you know what will be the, the major revenue streams and, and income sources in, in five years from now. And maybe start with you, Michael. In a few, just reading a, a few sentences, what, what your uh, outlook would be in five years from now. In terms yeah, of I think that uh, the industry um, for large portfolio owners will be largely the same in the parking store space. Why? Because it is scalable. But what will be different is the majority of the traffic will be come from mobile. Um, and I think it's the, and both David and I have discussed this quite a bit, about the intersection of, uh, of mobile and also social traffic and what's going to be happening in that sort of space. So I think maybe the advertising mixtures will change and things like that quite considerably. Um, I think that s some of the, um, uh, some domainers will be doing exactly what you guys are doing, which is building out real businesses. And I think one of the things that Jay has want to pick up on and said before, do something that's in your heart. Like be passionate about it. Um, and uh, so uh, don't do something because you think, gee, it'll make me a lot of money. Do something because 
you get excited about it. You want to get up in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Levine? Well, I think uh, domain parking is not going to grow as fast as everything else. Uh, call me a hater, but it's there are some realities which everyone has to understand. I don't think that, I mean, domains is not a bad investment still. I'm not saying that because, well, it's real estate. That's good. But I don't think with the nature of, uh, you know, well, I used to type domains in my in the browser when I was a young kid to find some stuff. I don't do that anymore. Okay. You know, so, and I mean, I'm talking about even younger kids and younger generations. Look at look at our kids. I mean, not our. I'm not, I don't have kids, but look at our, you know, the younger generations. They don't do that. So I think like the internet population is going to grow way faster compared, and the domain parking space won't grow at the same pace. Okay. Um, yeah. Nonetheless, the traffic's really good. It's clean. It's uh, it converts. So I think. Uh, so to kind of summarize, I'd say that the future does lie, in, you know, with mobile and uh, with data. By data, I mean really monetizing user intent, user mm -hmm. behavior, all that stuff, which today a lot of domainers are not even aware of. I mean, if you type in a domain name such as Santa Monica uh, Yoga Classes .com, you're expressing interest towards yoga. You may not click an ad, but you've expressed that interest. Today, ad networks are using that information to retarget you on a million other websites, but you expressed your intent from one website. So the, the original domain owner should get credit for that, uh, which does not happen today. And no one's even aware of those opportunities out there. So, so data is going to be huge. Mobile is going to be huge. Um, yeah. Data, that's... mobile, social, Jay, what, what was, in, you know, again, in, in just a couple of sentences, what is your outlook in five years from now? Sure. I think. I'll speak from our perspective. For building businesses, I think your domain is still critical. Um, we have people who call us every day who keep reminding us how important a great uh, domain name can be. Um, we have a farming background, so we like to say those are the you know the, the domain names can be the seeds or the seeds of uh, you know of a great harvest. Some people say a great domain name is like kind of having it the wind at your back. Um, I think those are both applicable. Um, it. Be, it your domain name continues to be a critical aspect of your business building plan. It needs to be a part of a bigger plan that, as I said earlier, maybe you want to be uh, perhaps revenue stream agnostic. You might also consider being channel agnostic as to where all that, you know, your traffic may come from, whether if it's from social or if it's from, mo you know, specifically mobile or if it's from some other platform that we don't even know what's going to be here. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities to build, uh, you know, to, to build on, to bring traffic into your business, into, into your business, and help your business to grow. Okay. So um, I think it's kind of, I make the analogy of the 800 number, and I think that, uh, again, the quality domains, dot-com domains, they're like 800 numbers. The more 877s and 876 and 866, the more it comes out, the more people need to understand the credibility, the more important it is. So that credibility, I think, is going to continue to grow. And I think like 10 years ago when you used to tell, you know, Zales, Diamonds, that they need Diamond.com, they used to go, oh, we don't need that. We're Zales. Now today they'd like to own it. And I think a few years from now when you have, you know, all these new TLDs and all this confusion and things like that, uh, people need credibility when they're trying to make a decision. And they're either going to do that based on, some factor like you spend a lot of money like a target or somebody does on television or you have a domain that they can instantaneously trust. So I think it's just going to, the quality is just going to continue to grow on the high side of the domain market. Okay, great. Thanks. Fred? Uh, I think on the development side, we're going to see uh, a lot more lead gen is growing by leaps and bounds. We're going to see more affiliate deals. Because anyone that has a, a, a product or service that they're selling is happy to give a commission to somebody else to sell it for them. So we're going to see more growth there. Mm -hmm. um, and on the non-development side, we're going to see, I believe, more zero click because we're taking Google out of the equations. So that means there's, there's more money to, to pass around. We're going to see um, more leasing um, for the companies that want a domain and can't afford it. And then I think we're going to see many more sales happen. 
as companies realize they need a good name and everyone has to have a website and more companies are building websites and they want better and better names as, as Zappy was saying. So they're, they're going to they're gonna start forking out the money for it. All right, great. Yeah, I think that's a good wrap up and, and maybe a good start for an open Q&A. Um, should we have about 10, 15 more minutes? So any questions are welcome. Nobody has any questions. Does everybody know what zero click is? R show of hands if you know what zero click yeah. is. Yeah. All, right, all, right. all right. For all those people that didn't raise their hand, you yeah. should have questions. You know, if not, I mean, surely what, what we see in the future already affects us today. Uh, if there's no questions, I mean, oh, here we got one. I'll ask a question. Yes. As far as lead generation, now I know there's a lot of work involved in getting you know, search engine traffic, organic traffic, but how about just based on organic, uh, how about based on just direct navigation traffic? Is that viable to actually develop some, some of the names? But just based on direct navigation traffic, whether it's 10, whether it's 100, whether it's 1,000, and not solely base it on trying to optimize and go through all the hard work okay. of trying to uh, you know, set it up to get organic traffic. So basically, is, is direct navigation traffic sufficient to build a site and, and uh, pro make it a profitable lead gen site? Or maybe that, SEO, more, SEM? Yes, and is that more scalable than rather than, obviously, if you have a thousand names, you can't develop a thousand names into a business. But you might be able to scale the direct navigation traffic okay. from the names that you have. In a yeah. more of a scalable let, let, way. Let, let's focus on. Other. Let's focus on that. So, um, I don't know who'd like to answer. Maybe, maybe Levine, um, you because I know you you deal with with, with well, both parts of the question. It, I think it's a it's a good. Uh, it's sort of like a litmus test. So you know you at least know that what's really going on. Like you, you develop a lead gen site out of uh, you know what we do today is we, we drive a lot of direct navigation traffic to lead gen pages and we see conversions. We see real conversions coming out of it. So I think uh, I'm not sure if it really answers your question. What again was the scope of the question? Uh, is just type in traffic sufficient to build a profitable lead gen site? Um, and how do you make it? The second part would be, you know, I mean, that's the first part. The second part would be how to make it scalable. I would, I, I would throw out there that I, I think it's probably a good baseline to start right. with. Yeah. But if you have something that's getting uh, direct navigation, then that means you have an opportunity there. So I would say take that baseline and then leverage that because uh, on, take for example, insurance quotes, the direct navigation traffic 65 plus percent of the people who direct navigated to insurancequotes.com would fill out the application. 40 percent who came through search for the term insurance quotes would fill out the, 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 uh, the application. So if you have direct navigation, that's like an indication that you have something of value and I would say that's a good place to, to develop. Um, and again, I would probably say if you have a thousand domains, analyze what you have and then you know, maybe make some partnerships so you don't have to develop those. But if you have some that are getting direct navigation, I mean, that, that's the best traffic there is. I would say if you're going to go that way, maybe try to get as close to the end user as you possibly could so that every single one of those leads, maybe you are getting paid on conversion because when you get paid on conversion, you know, that's sort of the dream where uh, you're sharing in the profits or the loan or whatever that is. So it's a big... So I, I, have, a, I have a clarifying question. Now, you, you were, you're talking about direct navigation only. Now, if you build a site, now you have a developed site, right? So now you're going to get some uh, organic traffic, maybe not much, depending on how much you put into the site, but, but certainly some, because you can't go, go beyond, you can't, you can't get any less than direct navigation, right? You can't lose that traffic. So you can only get more from there. So if you don't want to build the site and don't want to do any work, then you look at a zero-click model, right? And you just sell that traffic directly. But if, you, if you're going to place a form, you need to put some content up and then do some work to get good indexing. But that's a great uh, base to start with because now you have some built-in traffic. Uh, many years ago, nine or 10 years ago, I, I was getting into the DUI business and I built 1-800-DUI-laws.com and I had the toll-free number and I thought this was a genius move. Like, domain matches the phone number, brilliant. 
Well, I quickly learned that's not a great place to start, and I bought DUIAttorneys.com, which at the time had 5,000 visitors a month, roughly 5,600, something like that. Um, that was all direct navigation. So that was my base, just starting with that domain. And so that was um, a much better starting point for me than, than the, other, the other site. I, th I think some of the challenges is that most domains don't get like thousands of visitors a day and tens of thousands of visitors a month. And it's a scalability issue, once again, is that how do you do a deal with a lead gen company and say, they say to you, how much traffic do you get to your domains in this, in our market vertical? And you say, well, I've added it up and it's like 50 people a month. And they look at you and go, well, next. <laughs> it's a bit like that. So it's, um, uh, I think that what's going to happen more and more is that the lead gen originators will get more sophisticated and link through the ad, the ad networks. And so that you can then bring your 50 visitors um, to those, in those situations. But I don't think that is fully developed yet. And it's not because the ad networks haven't got it. It's more because the lead gen people themselves haven't. Um, the, end, the end consumers of the traffic. And that could be the, uh, possibly another few years off. It's happening now, you probably see it. Yeah. It's happening now, but it's not there yet. And that's the challenge for a domain owner. And I think that, that's what one of the questions yeah. is. It's just, yeah. uh, you don't know which model is the best one. It's just to talk about exactly. the generation. But the thing is that there's a lot of work involved actually creating all that content That's correct. So, so it comes down to, once again, the opportunity cost of your time. I would say yeah, one, one, one thing you could do to help yourself is to do a better job of letting people know what domains you have. Because I think a lot of domainers out there, they don't do that. So people don't find them and offer partnerships or opportunities or lead gen and things like that. So it's like this web 2.0 mentality or web 3.0. It's like put it out there. Don't you know, go, oh, I have my thousand domains and I don't want anybody to know that I own this and that. It's like, forget about that. Just put it out there and let the people who could be doing business or helping you to monetize it come to you instead of you hoping and praying that they find you. And, and you know what the problem with that is? Is that most of the time, let's say if you are a, a portfolio holder and um, having a, a creative, finding someone maybe for like a revenue share is great but most of the time, which is probably 90% or more that I would say a lot of these uh, other people have experience with, is that if they do find a developer or someone that can somehow do a revenue share, they want a part of the name as well. Now, it's easy to go and find someone else that may, might be able to create content, but there is no way that you are going to be able to find a name. And it, it, what I'm trying to say is that basically it's, you know, it's very difficult to give up a share of the name because you can always, that other, it's a win-win for that person because that person, there is no possible way that they're going to be able to do anything with that name and get a part in it. But you can always go find another content provider that can actually develop. The way that I've always managed that is that, you know, even if it's a high level name, it's whatever domain at diamond.com or whatever you place a domain value on the domain. You say, this is the domain value. Now you get a piece of everything that you create on top of that. So if the person does, isn't bringing value that you can quantify, they don't own any part of the domain. And you just are, have a lot more opportunities for people to develop your name or buy it or you know, just it clicks in their mind that, oh, my friend's starting a mortgage business and I saw this domain and they put two and two together. I think too many people try to you know, keep it for themselves. And there's like this classic example, this company, I'll just take 30 seconds and tell the story of Gold Corp, where this guy had a gold mining company in Canada, and everybody in the gold mining business, they keep all their geological secrets in a, in a vault, and they don't share them. And this guy got really frustrated because he couldn't find gold, so he published all of his, his geological information out on the web, and he said, I'm going to put up a prize, half a million dollars, whoever can tell me where to dig. Instead of getting all the regular people, he started to get seismologists and gemologists and all these people. And it led to him finding a $10 billion deposit on the land. So now Gold Corp's like a $20 billion company from a $10 million company a few years ago because he was willing to put it out there. 
and all these domain owners, I asked them, oh, what other domains do you have? And they're like, oh, I don't really want to tell you what, I'm like, okay, well, you know, great. But I would be publishing these domains in all these different places so that people could find me and help me to, you know, find my gold on my land. Everyone okay. emails Zappy their portfolio. I, I think uh, yeah. we have uh, time for one final question here. It's actually two questions uh, for Braden. Tell us what we don't know about zero click. And uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to ask you is, are you aware of any differentiation that's going on between um, trademarking and trademarking rights for uh, businesses that are truly brick and mortar businesses and have always been brick and mortar businesses but are now having to come to grips with with the the customer experience really being an online experience and is that in fact a different brand and a different trademark for example um, hotel.com is a registered trademark now um, any any comments that you have about the trademarking issues would be valuable. Uh, well, to on that? well, while I, I do love to hear myself speak, I, I think that that Levin could probably do a better job talking about zero click than I could. So sure. I'm going to pass that off. Sure, zero click is essentially uh, a form of monetizing domain names. As soon as a user types in a domain name, he's taken straight to the advertiser's landing page. Uh, typically, the advertiser's landing page. So, in regular parking, you would see a, you know, a lander where you'd see a lot of different links, which would then take you to the advertiser's page. With zero click, you're taken straight to the advertiser's final destination, which is his landing page. So, uh, what it does essentially is it say, it, you know, it kind of cuts down the, the, the funnel to finally reach the final destination. So, if I'm typing. Uh, you know, Santa Monica restaurants or, you know, actually that's not a good example. Let's say insurance quotes dot insurance, uh, get good, get, God, get yeah. cheap insurance dot com. Take me straight to uh, Geico or someone, you know, take, take it straight to the advertiser's landing page. That is, uh, that is zero click. So. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's so it takes out the middleman. You obviously yeah. you have some sort of uh, platform. Yes. Like Levin's, but right. otherwise you take Google out of the equation, which takes a lion's share of the ad dollar. Yeah. yeah the, the challenge you have with it though, I think, is that people should be aware of, is you're disintermediating a lot of the players in the middle, but it's typically on set market verticals. Yes. Is, is like insurance, we talk about insurance or finance, mortgages and that sort of stuff. So it's not for the great unwashed yes. domains, it's for those market verticals. Yeah. yeah. It's not for the long tail, it's typically yeah. for the, the big markets. The, the major online demand markets, that's where. Okay, that. great. Thanks everyone for, for, for this panel and uh, <laughs> And also for the audience, we have a break now until 3.30 and um, uh, uh, another session this afternoon, at, starting at 3.30, how to um, price a domain name, tips how to price domain names.